You welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily. Time now to zoom into our communities and know what is happening. Issues that affect our everyday lives, you know. And I've been joined in the studio by Duke Mensa Opoku. Hi, Duke. Hello. Morning. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm well. I'm well. It is 30th of June. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes, yes. So significant, have you, have you... significant for a number of reasons. First, yeah. the first part of the year ends today. Mm -hmm. First mm -hmm. six months. Mm -hmm. So... So if you are part of those who wrote the long list of <laughs> New Year resolutions. New Year. By now you have six pack. Today, by now you yes. bought a car. By now yeah. you've set up yeah, your business. Yeah, yeah. Today how is a far? very good how, day. How is market? <laughs> Today is a very good day to get a, a, a kind of good day and to reflect on. Take, take stock. Yes. For the first on, half of the year. The year. Right. And then secondly, mm -hmm. another important thing is happening. I think our banking sector, uh, not I think, it's a fact yeah. <laughs> that our banking yeah. sector has given all um, customers mm -hmm. a deadline of today to link their Ghana card, Ghana card to their bank accounts. Okay. Yes, I've seen a lot of, um, so f and I must commend the banks because to reduce the, the, pressure, the pressure on the banking halls, most of them have developed these um, uh, links, links, yes, yeah. internet links, where it takes you to your, um, it takes you to the website of yeah. the bank you put in your details, bingo, you are good to go. I did mine yesterday, it took less than 10 minutes. I just sat down virtually, did it on my phone, mm. my Ghana card, put in the details, and it's done. So please, today is the deadline, try as much as possible. Don't rush anywhere. The links are going yeah. around. So, yeah, so, so get the link. Get the link and then do that. I mean, usually if you have internet banking, you know, they will send you details, they will yeah. give you everything, just to make sure that you are not under any kind of pressure, you know. So if you are busy, you don't have to stop what you are doing to Ooh, drive somewhere, just bank. click and do this. You know, the most painful thing would be, you know, being able to access your own funds because of little things like, like this. I'm yes. sure if you want to close your account, it won't be that difficult, you know. It won't be that difficult, yeah, but the frustration but they will take, take you take to take the money. money. Yeah, forget it. Uh -huh. So just do this. But you can't close your account and leave the money there. Why? Uh, so that, no, if you want to do it, that one, I, I don't think they will do so this? much. <laughs> you know how it is like? Yeah, yeah, when yeah. you want to go and deposit, I mean, it's not too difficult. But, but when you want to go and take, I mean, all these kind of <laughs> follow days, requirements and all that. So just save yourself the stress and do the needful. Mm -hmm. And also, today is the last day of City Business Festival. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. What, a, yes. what a thrilling month it's been. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I would say this, my first, first introduction, my introduction to the City brand, mm -hmm. Was in was in was with the city business festival. Okay. Yes, I, that, at that time it was called the management development month. Mm -hmm. This was somewhere in 2012, 23. That's the first okay. time I listened to CTF. Okay. I was in level 200. Ah. So I just flip, flipping, flipping, flipping. At that, that time, 2012. Yes, I was oh, in level 200. Oh, you should be calling so me I've, auntie. I've let, I've let. <laughs> 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 you should be calling me auntie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, oh my God. Yes, I was in level 200 in 2012. I was flipping, flipping, flipping. Then I it was. Bernard was interviewing uh, Professor Henson, okay. Bob Henson. At that time, mm. he used to consult for Benz. And the kind of insights he was sharing about marketing, I was blown away. Oh, yes. I was blown away by mm -hmm. the kind of mm -hmm. insights, nuggets that Bob Henson yeah. was sharing on mm -hmm. the then management development month. Yeah. Now yeah. it has you know, gone through a lot of changes, my into mm -hmm. the city, city business city, festival. City business festival. Yeah. And yes, and yeah. even if you don't, if you are not a typical business mind, I mean, everything in life is about your brand positioning. It's so about yeah. your unique selling proposition, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. irrespective, mm -hmm. even if you are a corporate worker, if you work in the office and you don't really, uh, you don't involve, you are not involved in direct yeah. buying and selling yeah. or marketing or yeah. anything of that sort, you still some way, somehow need to use some certain marketing principles in your life. Oh no, but yes. you know, so, the mere fact that yeah. you are even a consumer yes. to all these things means that you, you must care you know, about some these people, things. The mere you know? mention of, at a point, uh, uh, the mere mention of business they figures whatever just it just yeah i'm not part of uh -huh. it and it's for, so, no but you once you are a consumer yeah. you know so if for instance fuel uh, prices go up you might not own a car but you bought a truck or you bought uh, i mean um, uh, uh, taxis mm -hmm. you know so it, it it concerns everybody yeah. you know yeah. so you are buying stuff from the market you have to understand why you paid this much mm -hmm. last month and why you are paying this this month so i mean it, 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 it has been um a festival and a project that everybody regardless yes. of where you sit it concerns yeah. you and, and and especially for people who are trying to do their own thing a lot of the content this one has also focused on 
people building up their own things, yeah. their businesses, trying to get into agribusiness, yeah. trying to set up their own thing, trying to take advantage of opportunities in the country, and even trying to access funding. So yes. maybe later on we'll try to do some business. And this will help us. In and that why regard. not? You know, oh. the city summit, for instance. Yes, I mean, yes, yes. I, I was blown away by the the presentations, yes. the panel conversation, and everything. Well, if you did not um, watch any of these, if you did not attend the city summit, it's still not. All hope is not lost. You know, you can go to our website, City Tube, on YouTube, and learn something, update yourself, upgrade yourself. And um, this comes at a free cost. All of the presentations. What else? Everything All of them. Is Even on radio, you yes. can just go into our yes. website, a SoundCloud account. Yeah. You can listen to yeah. all the presentations yeah. from day one to last mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. by the wonderful resource people that Bernard has interviewed. Yeah. And even the, yeah. uh, uh, the fora that we, exactly. we, we do on Tuesdays, yeah. Yeah. all of that focus Very on different informative. topics. Very yes. informative. But now let's go to something, I mean, a story that has been a bit worrying, you know, um, to all of us. Last year, something very unfortunate happened in Ghana. You know, in the Ashanti region, in Idra, there was a clash. You know, the outcome was not really um, exciting. So many things have happened. One year on, what has happened? Um, have people been compensated? Are people satisfied? I mean, what exactly has gone on with the Idra and rest. There is a report put together by Ashanti Regional Correspondent Hafiz Tijani. Let's take a look. When we come back, we'll have a conversation on this. It was an incident that gained national and global attention when two persons died after men in uniform opened fire during a protest at Ejra. Other victims suffered life-altering injuries and permanent disabilities. The government set up a committee to probe the incident. Findings were made and recommendations too. A year on, we are back to Edra to give you a recap of the incident, speak to persons who matter, and even find out how these recommendations have been implemented. Join me on this trip. The death of activist Ibrahim Mohammed, popularly called Kaka, sparked disturbances at Idra in June 2021. A three-member committee chaired by a justice of the Court of Appeal, Mr. George Kinsley Kumsin, was set up to investigate the incident. Key persons appeared before the committee to testify. The committee recommended the payment of compensation to relatives of the deceased and the injured. Although the deceased relatives have been compensated, the injured victims are yet to receive the package a year on. 16-year-old Awal Mizbao had one of his legs amputated after he was hit by a bullet during the disturbances in Ejra. Other victims, 20-year-old Luis Aikpa and 30-year-old Nazif Nu, also suffered life-altering injuries. Their parents say the conditions of the victims have drained them financially and a promise of compensation payment is yet to be fulfilled by the government. <laughs> aka cewo an bashi to gashi hawo yau an kai shekara ba wanda ya zo ya ce wani abu gashi yau awal na zaune awal na zaune bai aikin komai wo bai fari bai baki kuma ya ci ya sha ya sa sutura kuma ya yi rashin lafiya an kai shi hospital kafan man ya yana damun shi fa yana mai ciwo har yanzu ciwon bai bari ba ana san magani ka gani ko ya kamata gwamnati ya kula Yema awal wana abu. Awal kuma isan kama anchu cheshi ama nda sawki. Ama haya nzu gomna tibiyachi ukumiba. Ba musan kuwame nene yeke jira ba. Befa musoni ya saraba eno. Seja uinche ni ninu omra mefei. Ube si insuyo toso fomodi. Ye kuwa ya ye ba ye. Oma ye bibidi ensusu. Bono omuche ye so omube ba no. Ye bre. Ube si ene juma ye ye nina ane na msa adi ye wisu ntino. Mi ba ye minye me nina ye basa. And so, so, or Mosu or Mobu or Moye or Yan Chen Yan Hu or Money Yan Hu or Money, but also say Yan Tishi, Tia Slaomo, Afini, Yapo Macho, 
mobia omumra no omuncho omuni mehwe yesu ye kakra na yesu so ye bre afezu so nkura na anka sakura no omuhiamwa the committee also recommended the immediate transfer of the Edra district police commander at the time and that has been done municipal chief executive for Edra city dumasi dr kinsley say spoke about some of the recommendations implemented so far when a committee was set up to investigate what actually happened there were some recommendations that were made one of these is to establish a recreational grounds uh, that will get the young men the youth engaged in different sporting activities and they can make a trade out of those and uh, we have put in an application to that effect and uh, we are praying that an astroturf will be uh, constructed here for us a place a location has already been identified and so we are praying that um, our request will be fulfilled there was further recommendation that um, because of the heterogeneous nature of the population and the very viral um, market economy we have over here people come in and out all the time and that is a recipe for trouble so our security apparatus be beefed up with the establishment of a military base the traditional council in conjunction with um, the assembly have taken the necessary steps and i'm happy to announce to you that a week a week today last week tuesday like this uh, the general officer commanding the central command came with his team to inspect where they will establish the base the committee also taxed the national commission for civic education ncce to intensify public education of the indigents of edra on their rights and responsibilities edra municipal director for the ncce spoke about what his office has done so far after the recommendation my outfit rule out a number of activities in the municipality the first of its kind was to engage um, the youth. So we first had a youth activist workshop on violence extremism. Then after that sensitization program, we rolled out another program and had a town hall meeting on violent extremism. So after the town hall meeting, we were firmly on the ground. We engaged identifiable groups in the municipality on national cohesion and peaceful coexistence. The aim of this sensitization was to engender peace in the municipality. The traditional council in the area is also putting up a divisional police command to fulfill one of the recommendations made by the committee. And after the committee's uh, investigation and all that kind of to find out what brought about those misunderstandings, the committee also recommended that uh, the police in this area is quite uh, not enough. So there should be an, some kind of uh, bringing more policemen to help those who are already in the area. So uh, that means we need to expand the police infrastructure. And it all comes with cost. But Nananom decided to uh, come on board. The little that they receive from the lands and other tokens, they should gather all of the money and then start pushing to make sure we be able to put up something meaningful to support the government to be able to upgrade the police status in the traditional area. 
the family of one of the deceased says government must ensure the officers behind the shooting are punished. Justice. What we want is justice. I've already said it. You know, uh, we are in a country whereby we have our constitution. And everybody in this country as a citizen has to be a law-abiding citizen. And we believe that this thing that happened to us has ever happened somewhere else. Being that the leaders of this country did not do something to protect or to, 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 to defend that thing, that's why it still keep on going. I think as a media man, you heard what went on in Nkransa. We don't want to remember them because what happened in Ejura hadn't been there was a justice for those people, and there was a, uh, what what will I say? Uh, they, they they put up something like a, a, a sanction or punish to those who did that. This thing should have been not happened again. This thing shouldn't have happened again. The family of the late Kaka is also not happy about what it says is the slow pace of investigations. So upon which basis is the case trending? We as a family know we, we are not going to get any justice. And we know that justice will be denied since proper investigations are not done. Are you not preempting? I'm not preempting, but that is directly the feeling of the family based on what they have seen and based on the reaction of the police towards the issue. And how the Attorney General is also not taking the case as so serious as such. We were at Asuka court. Within the year, I was there at the court all the time we met. There are series of murder cases of different significance compared to ours. The case have been are tried at the higher court. Why is it ours is still pending? The Ejura incident remains fresh on the minds of inhabitants in this enclave. And they are saying never again should this incident happen. Some of the residents have been talking to us. I will tell my colleagues that we should always pray for them and we always pray that that incident will not happen again. Yeah, I'm happy about the peaceful situation in Nigeria here since the incident because if such incidents happen again to create fear and panic among the residents in Nigeria here and we pray that such incident never happen in Nigeria again. The Member of Parliament for Ejura Sechi Dumasi, Bawa Brema Sulemana, bemoaned the non-implementation of portions of the report. The community remains peaceful with inhabitants going about their duties. The day Kaka was buried, that is, uh, I'm referring to Abdul Nasser and the Mutala, who lost their life as a result of the reckless handling of the demonstration that uh, took place after the uh, burial of Kaka. We all saw how uh, the recklessness and how the military went in and how they shot into the crowd. And then uh, uh, we lost these two gentlemen, Abdul Nasser and then uh, Mutara. We also like to commiserate with uh, the victims, those who got injured. As of now, we have one boy, Mohammed Awal, who ha had his limb am uh, amputated. And then uh, one other, Luis Ayikwa, who also sustained a gun shot injury in his stomach. Uh, but yeah, uh, thankfully, he has been treated and discharged. Uh, if you ask me about my perspective or what, what I feel one year after, I feel a bit disappointed because. Uh, I, reason being that, in fact, any crime that goes unpunished em, emboldens the perpetrators to do more. Authorities say they will continue to ensure inhabitants in Ejura live peacefully, but a concern for family members of the injured victims during the disturbances is that government is yet to fulfill its promise to pay compensation to them. They want the government to step in and help.
Right, so uh, you welcome back from Idra, and this is a very detailed, you know, um, report on all angles um, as far as the update on the Idra unrest last year is concerned. Good job there by Hafiz Tijani. Now, Duke Mensopoku is still here with me. Duke, this is how far we have come with the Idra unrest. What do you make of um, what you've just seen and heard? Yeah, so first of all, I think um, Hafiz needs to be commended. It's a very comprehensive report, um, all angles covered. I'll look at it from three dimensions. The first is about the portions of the report that have not been implemented. It's good that the families of the deceased have been given 250,000 Ghana cities. Yeah. That must be put on record. But having said that, 250,000 cities can, is, is not the value of a human being. Of course. Yes. So nothing, nothing can, nothing can make replace, up for that. Yes. The people that breadwinners who lost their lives. Yeah people who had a lot of promise and potential through this unrest, they, they, they lost their lives. But even more important, those who are alive, like General Peg has been amputated, mm -hmm. he is deformed for life, maimed for life. He may not be able to engage in any meaningful job or mini, any meaningful source of livelihood. Mm -hmm. And you saw the mother there and how they still have to pay uh, for drugs, medication and, and, and all of that. So it's very important mm -hmm. that, I mean, we, the government knows the reasons why it did not set up a full commission of inquiry under Article 278 and decided to set up a ministerial committee yeah. under the Ministry of Interior. I'm not here to impute motives, but once the ministerial committee has been set up, they've given up their recommendations. The Ministry of Interior cannot implement part of it mm -hmm. and leave part of it. Mm -hmm. if, we've, if we spend money and resources and, 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 and um, putting a lot to get that work done by... Uh, blood uh, mentry down so and co in Kumasi yeah. even the kind of airtime that went into it mm -hmm. we also what yeah. what, what happened then they brought out the report and a lot of the recommendations or some of the recommendations have not been implemented one of it is the non-payment of the compensations yeah. to those who were injured mm -hmm. another one mm -hmm. are the some of the police officers who were, who were named they are still there nothing has been has has been done to yeah. them a good thing for me however is the fact that it looks like almost every stakeholder in the Idra Township is committed to maintaining peace. Yeah. So I commend highly the initiative of the traditional council mm -hmm. for deciding to use a part of their own funds to help in the construction of the Divisional Police Command, mm -hmm. as recommended by the committee. Yeah. This means that Nananum in Idra are committed mm -hmm. to the peace and security of their own um, 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 traditional area. Yeah. More so because Idra is a very, very, very bustling community is a food basket maize yeah, and, and this yeah. is it is very close to Mampo where i come mm -hmm. from so i know yeah, what it drum means yeah. in terms of the food dynamics in mm -hmm. there in the ashanti region you have a very I mean, vast market that's very bustling on, on on market days so and you know that commerce thrives very much in a secured atmosphere mm. so if the security of a dry is compromised a lot of business activity that goes on in the enclave especially in relation to the marketing of mm. food Mm. would be hit. Yeah. That's one. Two, mm -hmm. the issue of security and justice. Yeah. We know the challenges that we have when it comes to the criminal justice system in our country, especially when it comes to issues of murder and manslaughter or homicide. But in certain instances, mm. of course, investigations, that's why they are called painstaking. It takes some time because it's better for, um, it's better for one guilty person to be convicted than for a thousand innocent people yeah. to be convicted mm -hmm. it's a maxim that yeah. is, is used a, lo a lot mm -hmm. of times which means that it must take but one thing that must be done mm -hmm. for people to feel comforted and assured people have lost uh, yeah. um, 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 family members yeah. people have lost relatives i think that if the attorney general and the authorities are constantly in touch with the family informing them or updating them maybe on a monthly basis or once every two months, on how investigations are going, they will be comforted and they would know that yeah. something is being done and their issues are not being left left in, 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 in abeyance. No, but if you heard um, properly, the, mm -hmm. the one of the relatives mm -hmm. say that we know that we will not get justice. It's because of the you attitude know? of the system uh, Exactly. Now, now yes. I, I even want to look at what this means, you know, moving on. So we are talking about peace and justice. We are keeping quiet. We are not going to fight, but we know this is the situation. Nothing will be done. We will not be given justice. Meaning that these people don't have closure. 
and that is how they are going to move. So if there is a little provocation, you know, people have underlying issues why they are going to fight. Mm. And sometimes we don't look at these yeah. things. So, yeah. I mean, something happens, you might ask yourself, but this shouldn't degenerate into something mm -hmm. like this. But have we also looked at where they are coming from and possible um, issues that probably might push them into doing this? Yes, yeah, so that, that's, that's exactly the point because they operate from a certain, I mean, position that it will be difficult for us to get justice for, yeah. for them. And you are confirming their... Uh, long-held mm -hmm. notion yeah. or their perception by the food dragging or mm -hmm. the feed dragging mm -hmm. that is going on. That's what I'm saying that you, you have to, per the high standards of our criminal justice system, the prosecutors will have to do a very thorough job to be able to convict anybody at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. But while you are doing this job, ensure that you constantly update the family yeah. to let them know what they are doing so that they keep faith with the system. Mm. Otherwise, they can also decide to take the law into their own hands. Yeah. I'm not saying they should, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's an option that's available to yeah. them. And can you imagine the chaos if the family decides to engage in some form of uh, reprisal action mm. against people they suspect yeah. to be behind yeah. this? Yeah. That's not where we have to go. So immediately, I think the authorities in the region, the Attorney General's Department, especially mm. those who are handling this, the prosecutors, they should set up a certain form of mechanism with the family of those who were killed, yeah. especially Kaka, yeah. Yeah. so that they can constantly be updating them as to what they are doing mm. while the criminal justice mm. system takes its court. Yeah. I mean, that's the, only, that's the only thing we have. We cannot bastardize it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We cannot bastardize it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the system that we have, the system that we trust to be able to deliver justice. Yeah. But while that is going on, authorities, government, attorney general's department, should make it a point to constantly update the family yeah. on, what yeah. is, on, what, on what is going on. That's, yeah. And then the last thing last. I would say is that for me, I am happy mm -hmm. that the, the, the police in Nigeria managed to secure a restraining order, an injunction on um, the attempt or the decision by the family to hold a vigil. Yeah. <laughs> because... Would have be turned into yes, something else. Because... You feel that uh, Hafiz's report says that the community is calm. All they need is just a trigger. You know, that's what yes. I'm talking about There's because a lot of, once yes. they have concluded that yes. these guys won't do anything yeah. for us. Yeah. I know sometimes when you are pained, you really want to do something to bring it out and yeah. move on with your life. Yeah. So as it stands now, they still have that pain in them. One, for losing a breadwinner. Two, that um, nothing is mm -hmm. going to be done about it. You know, I think that sometimes uh, nobody expects things like this to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, they happen, people die and all. That is one. But how we handle the issue afterwards is what determines how people would, I mean, act moving on. Mm -hmm. So if we see that, yes, people have been punished. I, I like the swift, you know, uh, move by the interior minister to set up a committee. Yeah. Let's look at what happened doing that. People um, cooperated because they wanted to get the finality of yeah. this matter. Now, after that, what? Mm -hmm. One year on, people have not been compensated. Those who have died, you know, um, um, God bless their souls, but they have died. I mean, they have their peace. Mm -hmm. But people are still right, living. Yeah. Nothing has been given mm -hmm. to them. They are still taking care of themselves. They've now become a liability on their families. And this is what will even aggravate the pain yes. that they are going through. Yes. So, so it's good the court granted that order. And um, I'm just hoping that the family will be able to um, mourn him in peace and have their own yeah. commemoration or remembrance mm. service for him mm. without it necessarily being a community where they wanted to do something else if the police and the court um, had allowed that. So it's, it's a good decision mm. by the court. Mm. And I'm happy that the family um, say they will comply by yeah. it. They had decided not to be rebellious or yeah. to go against what the authorities are saying. Mm. So pay the compensations now. Get the police people who are still there out, even though the commander has been sent away. Yeah. But there are still people in there who have been identified who must go. They should go. And um, the, the DC the, or the MC should bring pressure to bear on the Ministry of Interior. And the Ministry of Interior, they are listening. This is not a small matter. Not at all. It's not. Because each passing day, without the compensation being paid, you are grieving or you are grieving the families even the more. 
and this is a drug yes. we are talking about. Yes. This is a yes. drug we know yes. a drug yes. yes. a very Yes. I mean, high to yes. uh, hot spots, yeah. you know, we know it dry. So there are certain things you don't want to, in as much as we are talking to the people, we also have to do our yes. part, you know, because they are also humans. Yeah. Anything can, I mean, anger them. But, but you know, I want us to also look at um, the genesis of all these. Mm -hmm. Could it have been prevented? You know, Idra has happened, Nkranza has happened. Um, even uh, three days ago, Krumayashi also happened, you know, police clashes and all these kind of things. How do we need to position ourselves, you know, at security agencies? How do we kind of do this? Because it appears that gradually um, we're having serious challenges with um, police mob control. You know, it is becoming increasingly difficult that any time the police meet protesters, any time the police meet people, there's you know, a certain for clash. The Islamic senior high school. Oh man, you know, I mean, these children, teenagers, you, you get it. Children, 12 so, year olds, so, 11 year olds. So, so what, what exactly is, is I, happening? I, I think that, and it's getting worse yes, by the day. I think that fundamentally there is, um, there is a problem with how our police officers are trained. There's a problem with how our police officers are trained. That's where the problem stems from. Hmm. And an even bigger problem is the kind of background checks. That are done I, think, on the I think it's time from recruitment, yes. you know, who has been recruited yes. and who is recruiting yes. them. Yes, so people, there's a general perception about people who go into the police that um, probably they, are not, they don't find, they, they have, they don't have, especially those who enter at the entry level. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, for those who enter uh, as officers, but I don't know, I, mm. can be, I, mm. I stand to be corrected, yeah. but those who enter after university, people see them in a different light compared yeah. to those who enter right from. I mean, senior high school, whatever yeah. it is. People have a certain perception that, oh, they don't have anything to do, and so they've gone to join the police. But are, they, are that's people enough. wrong? Uh, that's not for me to no, make no, a pronouncement no, on no. So, so, But so, so, people, so for them, they get the power of the uniform, mm -hmm. and they get the power of the state, and they, dis and they have a certain antagonistic mentality towards the society mm -hmm. that they are supposed mm -hmm. to. No, I asked, I asked, are people mm -hmm. wrong because some of these people were maids from school yes we know them we all know the plans we had mm -hmm. you know and it's not just with security i mean even with health you know sometimes people have great um um, um ambitions you know people want why, to why do don't this people say the same thing about the army it's all security no so so, so what but we, know, we know people right from childhood you know, yeah. their dream is to be in the army Exactly. So, so no, even, with, even that, with the police, yes. there are people who really want to be yes. police officers. That is there. But I'm saying that there are also a, a, a bigger number, mm -hmm. you know, who they want to do other things. They don't want to be teachers. They don't want to be nurses. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be police. But there's, they, they can't make it to, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, the nursing school. Mm -hmm. They can't make it to um, um, other areas. For, okay, so they wanted to probably be do medicine mm -hmm. you know to be doctors they couldn't get admission to medical school and so they feel okay i also don't want to stay home let me go do something else yeah. and you they know? find themselves in and the they find themselves in all these areas and so these are not people who have the commitment mm -hmm. and who have the zeal and the desire mm -hmm. to be here there are people that from infancy they want to be teachers yeah. but there are also those who I wanted to be something yeah. else but they couldn't get to where they wanted to be and so they have to find something and and because these areas might not be too difficult entering they find themselves there just to do something mm -hmm. you know so they are there not with a mind to serve the people not with a mind to make an impact mm -hmm. to you know um contribute towards yeah. nation building so they are there and so everything and anything you know it's just making them angry they, they are just not here to tolerate anybody so i think it's very important checking people's backgrounds, you know, especially um, during recruitment, yeah. to know what exactly they want to do, it's, to it's, check people's body language. Is this it's, easy it's, to find out? It's one of the biggest problems. I think that, I think in times past, and I think for Army and I think National Security, they still do it. They'll go back to your senior high school and check your file and other things. I don't think that still goes on with the police. Mm. If it did, mm. you wouldn't have somebody who was, I mean, sacked or dismissed from two different senior high schools. Yeah for and various reasons, ending up in the police, police. and allegedly leading a, a, a gang of police officers to be robbing bullion vans. How did that police get that bad? Well, do you just hold on yes. with the how. We'll come back to find answers to that. If this is Breakfast Daily, we'll take a breather here. We'll be right back. <laughs> Yes, 
You're welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily. Now, before we went on the break, we were taking a look again at um, the Edra unrest a year on Duke. So in your closing remarks, what would you tell the family? What would you tell the police? What would you tell government? The family should hold on. And um, if Mohammed will not go to the mountain, the hmm. mountain must go to the mountain hmm. to Mohammed. They should request for a regular update from the Attorney General's department, at least from the prosecutors who are working on yeah. this. They should do that. If they do that and they, do, they are not hearing anything, then they can come back to the public domain mm. and say, these are the steps that mm. we are taking to ensure that. And for government, I think they should, it's even shameful to say the least, 12 months after it happened, for them not to have um, been given their compensation packages, I think it leaves much to be desired. They should yeah. be, be, the, the people should be paid so that if they can even start something, because mm. there's no meaningful employment those who have been named and injured, they may be able to do that. Yeah. So government should pay them the compensations. And I entreat the, the MP for the area to, as a matter of urgency, drag the Minister for Interior to Parliament yeah. to come and tell the whole country when they will pay the compensations. Because very it's, it's very, very sad, mm. to say mm. the least.